Let's get you caught up on From the Ground Up. First, a really big hole was dug. Then a bunch of smaller holes were drilled. Then those holes were all filled in with rebar and concrete in order to hold up tons of decking and precast. All so some huge steel assemblies could be bolted down and the structure could be enclosed with a steel roof and glass walls. It's just that simple, right? The Raiders, united with a team of tireless leaders from Nevada, are creating an ultra-modern, permanent stadium for the Raider Nation to call home. These are the stories of the people and the project, told from the ground up. As the famous Greek philosopher Heraclitus once said, the only thing constant in life is change. So, as the project closes in on that final stretch towards completion, the changes at Allegiant Stadium come quickly and noticeably. But while the stadium has grabbed most of the attention, another building that's just as important to the organization has also been rapidly changing, just under 13 miles away in Henderson. Here, the team's headquarters are being constructed by the W.A. Richardson Company. The building in Alameda, we purchased, it was already built, so it wasn't customized for us. This is something that the owner had a vision and he was able to design with Manica. Something really, really impressive, and, and when you walk in, you'll be able to see that, and it'll be something that uh, Raider fans in the Vegas community can be really proud of. We put the building close to Executive Airport Drive on purpose. We want it to be something that, as people drive by, it's a source of pride to the community, as opposed to putting it on the back side of the property. When you compare what we have here to what we have in Alameda, everything's about 50% larger. We have 55 acres on site. We're developing approximately 30 acres right now, and we have an additional 25 on the back side of the property that'll be for a future development. This office building right here is followed by the big indoor facility. And then we have our performance center, which consists of the locker room, the training room, the weight room. We have three outdoor fields, which is grass. In the front of the building over here, right by uh, the portico share is the torch. That'll be the torch that's coming from Oakland that was at the stadium there. So this area right here, you have the team meeting room behind you. So it's tiered down in auditorium style. We'll have a massive screen up at the front for the coaches uh, to display for the players, and then a couple screens on the side as well. We have a field and a half worth of indoor space. That building is that high, so you can punt inside. You can do every sort of football aspect in there. So this is our Silver and Black production studio. On the Silver and Black show, starting right now. Welcome to another season of The Silver and Black Show. I'm your host, Nicole Zalunas. This is where we'll produce all of our content, TV shows, podcasts, radio features, everything for our digital platforms comes out of this space right here. And this was designed from the ground up. One of the goals that we wanted to do is as a player's entrance, which is their entrance over there, they walk in, they have their meeting space to their meal room, and then they walk down this performance center wing. Their coaches are right above them, so they're not wandering all over the side of this massive building. The entrance you came in is the entrance you'd come in every day. Right to do. Yeah. We'll go inside and work our way back around, but this is where you got all three grass. It's a 60-person theater, so offense and defense each have their own mini team rooms. This is all position meeting rooms right down here. Where is it? What's this? This is the meal room. So oh, right here, man. you've got your grill. You've got a griddle, okay. grill station, all your hotline right here, smoker in the back, pizza oven in the corner. All right, here, I'll bring you to the indoor now. So there'll be three goalposts suspended from the ceiling. I think it's a really impressive facility. Just walking around, you really just feel like there's so much opportunity. It's all going to be uh, top of the line. So we're, we're excited to get here and get to work. So this whole space, from end to end over there, is all, is all the locker room. We have TVs and lounge areas on either end right here. Like, that's where that stuff's coming. You got anything in our own personal locker, like a TV? No, you don't have your own TV in your own locker. <laughs> no. Fair question. 
there's so much going on in there and like obviously there's a lot of, that still needs to be done but just kind of getting just a little taste of what it's going to be is just it's going to be amazing we're obviously excited to have everybody under one roof again we've been operating out of two markets for the last three years and that comes with its own set of challenges we spent 25 years in the place uh, it'll be really emotional i think leaving's emotional but the greatness of the Raiders is in its future. This is our future. While the stadium gets most of the attention, it's where the memories are made on the field and where millions around the world watch their heroes perform. This right here is our home. So while the work continues on the dramatic changes for the Raiders organization, back at Allegiant Stadium, just under 1,800 construction workers continue to change what was once a vacant lot into a new shining jewel for a changing city. Which leads us to an interesting question. Who exactly is the modern construction worker or craft worker, as they are now called? In decades past, the construction worker may have been widely seen as a roughneck, a daredevil hanging from ropes and dangling from girders and rock walls to help bring America needed buildings, dams, and bridges. Today, though, things in the trades, as they are known, are changing as well. Knowledge of proper safety requirements and regulations and very complicated computer software programs and technologies, those things are just as necessary as the ability to swing a hammer or turn a wrench. And while the trades have always been seen as a diverse group of men, there is one group in particular that's making some serious changes of their own in this line of work. I know when I was in high school, I had no idea that construction industry was an option to consider. Definitely not for me. I thought, hey, I'm gonna be an architect. Architects build buildings. I wasn't even sure what contractors did. I'm an assistant project manager, so we work with the engineers and the architects to bring their ideas alive and get them from paper to the building itself. When I was a little girl, my dad always wanted us to be an engineer, and I told him I was never gonna be an engineer. I was really good at English and history, um, not so great at math, like a solid B minus student probably. We're gonna walk down through the bowl and then up through the building. So if you wanna follow me, let's go. I was volunteering with kind of like a Habitat for Humanity group. And I was like, this is really fun. And I had a great time out on the job site, you know, helping put siding on a house and caulking windows and stuff like that. I thought it would be fun to make a career out of it. So in the end, I told dad I was gonna become a construction engineer and he was right and I was wrong, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> but I'm glad I did it and it's been a great experience, so. There's a lot of electrical panels, pump units, stuff like that. That really is the inner workings on how a building is able to flush toilets, able to have air conditioning, heating system, um, electricity. So this is kind of like the powerhouse floor. One question women working in construction frequently get is this. How did you get involved in this line of work? So originally I'm from India when I was in high school. I remember I was walking down my street with my mother. They were building a column and they were connecting, trying to pour the beam. Like, why are they connecting? Like, it just looks funky. She's a physics teacher, so she just stood there. She tried to explain me how the forces work. And I was like, that is something you can actually see. It's very tangible, you know, and it's very gratifying. You can see what you've done, like, right there. That was a moment in my final year for high school. I was like, I want to be an engineer. I worked with my husband doing electrical work. Years ago, I was very young, about 25, and I seen all the heavy equipment out and about, and I thought, gosh, I wanna do that. And he encouraged me, and here I am, 27 years later. Eric, do you copy? Go ahead. Hey, did you see any of the fall protection with the pelican hooks? Prior to getting into the union, I worked two jobs. As a single mom with two kids, I missed out on a lot. So my dad, who's actually a retired Union Glazer, told me to get into the electrical field. I got in, it's the best decision I've ever made. When I was younger, I knew I wanted to go into the math and science field. I spun the wheel of life and it landed on engineering. By the time you got to become a senior, they wanted you to pick a more disciplined aspect of civil engineering. They said, if you have a good personality, this is the industry for you, you deal with people. 
So I decided my personality is pretty good, so I would become in that industry. You know, help me out all the other guys. All right, I got you. I was gonna ask if you could help me out on 350. The towel setter's put up towel, and now I'm just grouting it with epoxy grout right now. I'm doing a clean wash so that that epoxy can harden up. I'm a finisher journeyman, or journeywoman, if you want to call it. Three years now, I've been in the trade. My husband, he was in this trade, so I've been in it since then. Okay, I just have a couple notes from Pod. We have plenty of new employees entering the job site every week. I think when you look at orientation, it's about 150 people every single week join this project site to work with us. So let's make sure that we're doing everything we can to help those people succeed. I spent a lot of time sitting at a desk in high school as a receptionist, and I realized wow, this isn't the life for me. I don't want to be stuck behind a desk for the rest of my life. I thought I was going to college for insurance, and then at a career fair, Mortensen recruited me into construction, and I thought, okay, why not try it out? This is now my third stadium that I've actually been able to be a part of as a safety professional. Yeah. Yeah. For the design so prep, and that will be full drawings, elevations, yeah. and, you know, quote, unquote, their first round of signatures. They need four weeks is what the guy said to do that part, and we would want to be in tandem with them, right? Like yeah. we, we wouldn't yeah, necessarily want them to work in a vacuum, but yeah. I think that that's realistic, and that comes with a bit more of a detailed estimate. I actually entered our industry with some decent college education, but as far as like hands-on construction education, that wasn't necessarily my strong suit. People say, hey, Sarah, what do you do for a living? For a while, I would say I work in construction, and they would be like, oh yeah, and maybe they jump to, I probably had a hammer in my hand or something like that, because that's just what they thought, and so I, I found myself really struggling to explain our industry. Another question often asked, why in the world would you want to do a dirty job? This was my very first experience at Underground, and being able to start it from the very beginning was super awesome. I'm going to get to see every phase of the job, which is neat. When we won Las Vegas Raiders, at that time I was working on the cost estimate of this project, and I got the opportunity to come out here and handle steel, which I would say is an opportunity of a lifetime. There are a lot of different personalities, a lot of different companies and trade partners that I get to interact with and ultimately help make successful as they put work in place on the stadium. This job, this is part of history. You know, my brother's a huge Raiders fan. My nephew's played ball since he's a little kid. So they're all in awe and just being here, watching it be built and the people are amazing, the safety's amazing. So I'm just proud to be part of it, right? <laughs> I've had struggles with people who haven't been very accepting of the idea that I was going to recommend something to them or ask them a question and that kind of thing. Somebody once told me, in order to be successful in our industry, you need to really own your scope. Somebody asked you a specific question about your scope, you needed to be able to answer that. And if you couldn't answer it, that was okay. You just need to be able to follow up very quickly um, and develop that trust and develop that confidence of the folks working around you. It's a simple recipe and it's effective. It's very challenging because even though I'm 27, I still get ID'd for everything. Most people think I'm 17. I don't view it as it's difficult dealing with men. I view it as it's difficult dealing with people that are very experienced. But what I do is take the approach of, I understand you know more and you've been in this industry longer, but let me help you be more successful at your job. By taking that approach, people are like, oh, she's gonna get stuff done for us. We're gonna go to Mary and she's gonna help us out. In the very beginning, and that was years ago, you know, you had to prove yourself. You know, if a man got in trouble, that you were able to assist. Personally, I understand then it was a man's world, you know, and I was stepping in it. But uh, I love it. I, I couldn't have picked a better career. We're only at about 3 to 4% female that spend their time out on the project site. I really wish that that number could go up, so I guess Girls, if you're watching this, you're interested in construction, I recommend reaching out, trying to go to a job site to visit it because it's not as intimidating as it may come across.
I think a lot of people don't even consider construction as a career path because they don't understand what it is. My parents worked really more in general industry manufacturing. When I told them I was going to work in construction, they thought I was a little crazy. And now they just use it and bragged all of their friends. As these pioneering women continue to change the stereotypes in an industry and contribute to the success of their various teams, work at Allegiant Stadium is at an all-time frenzy. Opening day is just around the corner, and it seems that all the mechanical components are being worked on at once. We're witnessing the words of Heraclitus firsthand. A changing industry, a changing building, and the changing of a team's name that will forever change a city, a city that knows a thing or two itself about change. Four years ago, we told the state of Nevada that you're getting more than a football team. You're getting an army. You're getting the Raider Nation. We got to finish this stadium safe and in the Raider way. And I know you guys are going to get that done. Here we are, baby. The Raiders, Las Vegas. Today's a big day. It really is. Can't thank the governor of Nevada enough for putting his faith and everything else in our organization and helping bring this to fruition. I think that four years ago, we were just talking about this was a dream. It was all maybe, maybe, maybe. And that dream has become a reality today because of the credit that they gave Las Vegas, a chance that they took on Las Vegas. It's gonna be home to Super Bowls. And the impact that the Raiders are gonna make on this community is gonna be felt for decades to come. And I'm so proud of them. It's a great moment, and I'm glad we got to share with the workers. Uh, we've spent a lot of time with them. We're here every quarter, uh, and you try and have some special moments with them. They've been the ones that are building this. We got about six more months to go, and we're pretty excited about it.